Honor Game Review. During World War II, you're sent on several covert ops missions to try to bring down the German war machine. The game is essentially a typical FPS from this period. It's really on par with some other first-person shooters from 1999, and I would say slightly below some others. I wouldn't quite place it alongside Quake 3, for example, or necessarily AVP. The basic gameplay has you finding your way through these very linear levels, sometimes finding items, combating German troops, and finding the exit. There are no timed levels, in spite of a couple that sound from the description as if they might be, and there's a level where you have to go into a submarine, make sure that it will sink to the very bottom after you leave it, and then make sure that it will very briefly go up to the surface of the water, allowing you just enough time to escape it, and then it'll sink. That sounds awesome. And somehow it isn't. It's very plain. It There isn't really anything to it other than what the level looks like. The AI definitely has some panache to it. I've seen enemy soldiers sacrifice themselves by throwing themselves on a grenade to save some of their fe fellow soldiers. As you get, I'd say, about halfway through the game, they start throwing grenades at you, and sometimes they're pretty darn good at it. Other times they run into their buddies' grenades. Sometimes they get themselves killed with grenades or bazookas. The Near the end of the game, it tries to ramp up the difficulty, and it does so by basically making the enemies unfair, and this is really quite frustrating and irritating. Basically, there are some bazooka troops that can apparently, in this game, shoot you, even though you're really up close, without getting killed themselves, and sometimes they will just sacrifice themselves by shooting the bazooka when you're really close to them. I'm not sure if that's... <laughs> A bigger issue than the other bazooka troops, which literally are absolutely useless if you just move close to them. They'll literally start trying to run away from you. If you try to get them into a corner, they'll start running in circles. But for the time, there are definitely some things to the AI that are pretty interesting. They shoot around corners, they do take cover, they use simple tactics. Again, it ain't Half-Life, but, you know, the graphics are very blocky, a lot of squares, I mean, even heads, heads seem like they're built of, I don't know, triangular shapes, really. The story, what there is of it, isn't bad. And, to an extent, you do feel like you're really making a difference in the war. The, there are definitely some interesting concepts for levels. The tone is a tad silly. Not always, but some of the, for example, death animations are quite cartoony. And... The, um, sometimes it's a shooting gallery, like Wild West style, like you'll sh be shooting people from off balconies and they'll literally scream loudly and hurl themselves 
over the ledge or edge or whatever a little excessive and it kind of causes a little bit of a cognitive dissonance with how the the overall approach is a bit realistic I would say. The weapons are quite cool and there are several very memorable ones. I do not know that much about World War II history but at least in this aspect it does seem that the weapons are indeed all based on actual weapons from the time complete with you know the details of them. You use submachine guns, sh shotguns, pistols, some sound at least one sounds pistol, rifles, a sniper rifle, grenades, both American pineapple ones and the German ones, you know, the potato masher, and a bazooka. You never ride a vehicle, but you can take over gun emplacements, machine gun emplacements and use them and that is nicely done. There is not a lot of replayability to this game other than the multiplayer which is limited to two-player split-screen and I guess the two-player limit is pretty obvious because this was for the PlayStation you know, PSX I think it's called. The multiplayer is fun there are six levels, five weapon loadouts, sixteen different looks for the characters, and basically that's something that you could maybe spend, where you could spend more time on the game after you've completed it. Other than that, you can go back and try to improve your rating if you didn't already get a medal the first time. There are sev seven missions, 24 levels, and the if you do really well, you will get a medal, which will unlock a secret code, either for multiplayer or single player. And these are a bit like the bonus in... It's like bonus stuff, really. And that's about it. I... I do got to say, the very last level, they really try to ramp up the difficulty. One thing they do is put a lot of boxes in your way, and it's not difficult, you just gotta, you know, blow through them, but while you're doing that, they're sending troops at you that are literally teleporting, they're coming out of nowhere. And everywhere, really, you know, all sides of you, pretty much, and this is just irritating. And I guess it's because it's running out of memory in that level or something, but I can't pick up the enemy's weapons. And I also can't seem to pick up ammo in it. And, you know, this is kind of the sort of thing that really shouldn't be left in your game by the time you release it. Anyway, that was my review of Medal of Honor. Hope you enjoyed it.